I don't want to live without you, Lord, cause I don't want to live alone, and I don't know why sometimes I bypass my heart, sometimes I look the other way, the choices I made in life seem so hard, Jesus, I Anybody want me? Somebody help me. Whoa. Take my sin from me. Cause I don't want of you might feel that way or have felt that way in your life at times so I just just take that song and take it for what it means we don't want to be alone and we don't want to be without Jesus and not without the precious blood of Jesus in our life and I'm so thankful that we're um, coming to an end of a season getting ready to step into the next season end of a year getting ready to step into a new year you know we have the new year's things we like make all these promises to ourselves. Let's just don't make promises this year that we're not going to keep. Let's make promises that we're going to keep. To, to be on fire for Jesus, to step one step closer or two steps closer and just get really intimate with him this year. Ask him what he would have you to do, how he would want you to live this year, how he wants your life to look this year, your job even. You know, sometimes I feel like we're lost in things we're not even supposed to be in, even at our jobs. And so ask the Lord what he has for you in 2021, what he has for you and not what you want for yourself. And I believe that he's going to give you an answer. I believe that he's going to give you that new job, that new revelation, that new vision of who you are and how he sees you. Because when you can clearly see yourself like I have, how Father sees me, it changes everything. It changes everything. And I feel like that the reason that God called us to this region is so we could help a group of people change everything in their life. To get them to know who they are and whose they are. That he called them for a purpose, for a reason. For his glory and his revelation. You know, we've been talking about power. The power of saved. And being saved and being sanctified, the power of the call that God has for you. There's so many people that are waiting on us to get where we need to be so they can get to where they need to go. And it's so important that we do that, that we walk the walk that he has for us. Not that anybody else has for us, but the walk that he has called for us and dreamed for us. That's the most important place. If you're, if you're prophetic... I put a call on you to become more prophetic. <laughs> if you are 
if you are, if you, <laughs> you don't even know what I'm talking about. Anything else? <laughs> she don't understand because she don't understand because she's a computer and she's not going to understand because she don't have feelings and emotions. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Jesus always does something fun like that in the midst of this. But it is, guys, it's, it's, so, it's so fun. I mean, these guys will tell you it's so fun to serve Jesus. I remember a time when I thought, man, I'm going to I'm gonna have to quit this. I'm going to tell you, you don't have to quit one thing, but you're going to want to quit a lot of things. You don't have to step away from one thing, but you're going to want to. You're going to want to because the deeper you get with him, the more intimate you get with him, you're going to want to step away from some things that's causing you strife. And it's this year, it's, it's a year of focus, I feel like, that God's going to put us all in one accord, not one car, but all in one accord, that we can all be going in the right direction, all be headed the same way, all be doing what God has called for us to do. And it's so amazing, and I thank God for where we are today, from where we was last year at this time, or even the year before at this time sitting in a little park in Martinsville on Thursday nights. Remember our first Christmas party. I remember our second Christmas party and our third one. It's only been, we've, we're two years into this and we've, we started at a time we could wear three Christmas parties, I believe. And so I'm just, I'm just remembering back to where we were and where we are now. And I want you guys to know, and I've said this before, God has handpicked you. If you don't believe that, trust me. He has handpicked you for this season, for this time. This is like being handpicked and given tickets to the Super Bowl, but it's even greater than that. When the Super Bowl was great. When, I don't see it great anymore, but I used to. But, but it's like that. It's like being invited to that one-of-a-kind event that is impossible to get a ticket to. But you guys have that. You have that opportunity. You have that. God has set you on the front line to receive that, that gift that he wants for you. We're the front runners of this new thing that God's doing. And it's not really a new thing, but it's an old thing that he's bringing fresh in our minds. And it's seeming like a new thing because we've gotten so far away from the true thing of God, from the truth of God, from the realness of God. It, it really breaks my heart how far the church has gotten away from God it really breaks my heart because I love people so much and for the church to be so deceived by money or power it, it bothers me I don't want us to ever be that way I don't want us to ever be cliquish ever find someone new every service and meet them and talk to them and get to know them that's what's going to make this thing real, what God's doing in us. So I just appreciate you guys this morning, everything that you guys have poured into this, this, this debt-free place, this debt-free church. I appreciate everything that you guys have poured into this. It's just been amazing. It's just been so good. Um, this week has been a real tough week for many people in our congregation and really in our region. We've had a lot of loss. Um, our drummer Stoney's not here today because of his very dear friend passed last week and they had the funeral and he's been a great support for the mom and the family so he texted us about 1230 and just said hey guys I've not slept all week you know it's just for a 19 year old this is a lot to grasp Stoney is a neat hearted kid <laughs> and um, young man and so I want to lift Stoney's family up, well, his extended family, meaning the friend. Michelle is the mom of the young man who passed. So I've had Amber on my heart all week. So she lost her grandmother, which was her last grandmother that was living. So that's a tough one. Um, and I don't know that I'm going to remember everything going on. So raise your hand. I just kind of felt like if you have a need of loss that happened this week or last week, to stand, and I was just going to have some people lay hands on you and come to you. 
probably be the easiest. I know Linda, um, sweet lady. I don't know if you guys, many of you have had a chance yet to meet her. She experienced the water immersion revival in September with Pastor Todd Smith, and her life was just radically changed. And then she took off. Um, she was here for four, three or four weeks, and then all of November she visited family in Florida. And so we dearly missed her and kept in touch by Facebook. But just this week she got a very grave report of stage four brain cancer, lung cancer, blood clots in her lungs, um, spine, spinal cancer. But boy, is she not trusting the Lord? I mean, you know, we hear that and it's like, wow, you know. But I told her I'd get her a cloth. You know, there's many cloths that have um, were prayed over and anointed in that water. And what, the miracles that we saw Jesus do in these horse troughs, um, you know, was amazing. All of us experienced that in Ju July and then, or June and September when Pastor Todd Smith came. So we know nothing is too hard for Jesus. And we've prayed with Helen or prayed with Linda over the phone, and um, she's up north now, northern Indiana. But she wants us to stand with her for a miracle. So her faith is in a great place. <laughs> she has a great a great attitude to receive a miracle. So I'm so grateful for that. And like Jason said, you know, if she goes to heaven, then she's fully healthy and whole there. But right now, she's asking for a miracle. So I want all of us to just be believing for and contending she's with believing. Linda. She's believing for a miracle. Yeah. So that's where the, yeah. the thing is, you know. Yeah. Our mom was still the stage four lung cancer, and then we had to pray for her. And she was still the stage four lung cancer. And she lived for another two and a half years when they gave her six months to live. So, but but when she got the, when she got the bone cancer, she just said, I said, Mom, what do you want to do? And she said, I'm just done. And she was ready to go, and I, we accepted that. We said, well, if you're ready to go, then go. You know, and so three weeks from that point, she went. And so we're just thankful that, you know, it, it, there's power behind wanting and desiring to live, you know. And so when Shelly said that, um, wow, I want us to get to a point where we don't say that. Where when we see a situation, we don't walk in and go, wow. Because when we do that, we're putting God in this little bitty box that says, this is a little bit too much for you to do, and it's never that way. So let's get him out of that box, out of that wow zone, and go that he can do this. He can and already has done it. We just need to receive it and believe it. And I believe that that's, you know, there's going to be some transition. So wow to wonder. <laughs> wow to wonderment. All right. Well, Father, we just thank you and give you all glory, Lord, for this Sunday. We thank you, Father, that you reign no matter what has taken place, the loss the last couple weeks from, from people in our body and from the reports. God, we know that Jesus sits at your right hand and he bore on, his, on the cross for Linda's healing. Every part of her body can be restored. And we believe that with you, Jesus. We appropriate the blood and the glory of Jesus Christ over Linda Norris's body this very moment. We thank you for the prayers, the power of agreement in prayer and what that does. Lord, we thank you for your comfort. Holy Spirit, you bring comfort to the ones who mourn. So just comfort, Lord, all who are grieving. We just lift up to you Stoney's friend, his family, Michelle, the mother. We just lift up Stoney to you that, God, you would just meet him and bring him rest where he's at from this situation over a week ago, Lord. Lord, we ask for comfort over Amber and her family. Lord, for that loss. And we praise you, God, that she is in heaven, that that grandmother. And even I thought of today the prayers of, of a righteous grandmother and, and for Amber and her family, that none of these children um, have a chance but to serve Jesus because of her prayers. We do not take that for granted. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, just that your grace be extended, Lord. Bless this day, Lord, every part of the... Every time, Lord, every minute of the time we're together today, bless it and show yourself mighty in the lives of the people here today. I thank you for the visitors. Bless their families. We just release heaven and peace and even joy, 
Lord, your word says, joy unspeakable and full of glory, that your glory is here, so so is joy. And joy abounds, Lord. There's every morning, Lord, there's new mercies every morning. Release your love wherever Linda's at. Release your love over your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Life of Love family and visitors. We're glad everyone's here this morning. Yes. Today is our day to get to celebrate Christmas as a family. I'm so excited. It's so much fun. That's why we have the table set up so we can have lunch together as a family. Afterwards. So it's a little bit different if you haven't been here before. But that's why. And we're very excited. And just a few announcements this morning. We're so excited to announce that we're going to start services on Wednesday nights. So mark it. Yes, right? Yeah, more, more learning that we have. And it's going to start this coming January 6th. So mark your calendars, January 6th on a Wednesday nights. We'll start classes. And Tammy is actually going to start the first series. Would you like to give a little, a little, are you, she's finishing. Basically, we're, she's going to, I'll just give you a little, oh, Pastor Jason's going to give a nugget. So, so 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. So come, everybody come. We're going to do different segments of stuff, and we're not sure how we're going to do the worship, whether it's going to be live or whether it's going to be just from the screens. Um, but but Tammy's going to lead the first session, and it's going to be in Sozo Ministry and step a little bit in that. But I want to let you guys know, we also from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, we're going to have intercessory prayer. So if we have prayer warriors that just want to come and pray for those that time period, you don't have to stay for the Wednesday night service, but if you want to come and pray for that time, um, we're going to have a powerful time of intercessory prayer that we're going to dig in and pray for this With this region for what God has. I mean, there's just so much, you know, and, and we can't get away from the prayer part of it, too. You know, there's the action part, but there's the prayer part. And uh, so, um, and then Ty is going to um, head that up, I believe, um, on, on Wednesdays at the 6 o'clock. And we got something that Rod's going to head up he don't know yet. So we're going to... Um, um, <laughs> He's got these. These two. These two are valuable. They got some value that we're, we're, uh, we're, we're gonna grab it from them and steal their knowledge. And so, that's good. All right. In case, in case you haven't heard of Sozo, how many's been blessed by a Sozo ministry, or you know somebody who has? I know I have. And so Sozo, just a really quick glimpse into it is inner healing, basically. Bottom line, that's my definition. Inner healing. We all need inner healing, no matter how old we are, right, Helen? Yeah. Or how young we are. We all yeah. need inner healing, so it's going to be very, very, very powerful and impact all of us. So let's make sure we mark Wednesday nights. And speaking of Tammy, look at this beautiful painting that Tammy's going to tell us all about this morning. Oh, my goodness. Would you like me to hold the mic? And Very clever. All right. Well, the Lord um, was just really speaking to me here about the church for this this coming year and how we are the church and we're to house this is a, a picture of a, a building which that's what a lot of us think of you know we think of the church as a, as a building but we're the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit we are the church and I wanted to go ahead and do a building because I want us to just think about what a church represents uh, I know for me growing up I, I um, had a grandmother that went to church, but it was something that wasn't a part of my life until I became an adult and had my first child, and then it became a place of learning. It became a place of family. It, it became a place of love and safety, and it came. A, it just became just such a rich place to, in my heart, and so I, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to say he wants us to be that to this to the people that we're around. He wants them to be able to come to us to teach them, to, you know, to love them, to have them feel that they're safe with us at all times. And, and so I just wanted to encourage the church this morning to be the church. And the verses that the Lord gave me were, um, one of them is Acts 7, 49, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. 
what house will you build for me, says the Lord, and what place of my rest? And so he wants to come and to dwell in us and to rest in us. And that's actually a reference from Old Testament, Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? And where is my place of rest? And all these things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. And then the last one, um, just wanted once again to encourage us to be the body and to come together. Um, Acts 2, verse 42 says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple. They broke bread together in their homes with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And so once again, just want us to truly be the body of Christ, to house his spirit well, and to be a safe place for those that will come encounter with, you know, encounter and uh, just further the gospel. So what we're going to do today, guys, is this is the end of the year. We're just going to have a little bit of a um, kind of like a talk panel. We're going to let you guys ask some questions that you have of us, and we're going to give you a little bit of um this year and just a breakdown of this year and what God did this year and what he's done from the start of, of Life of Love. So it's going to be pretty incredible. We lose half our crew. We have five ladies. Uh, one goes to the bathroom, two go when it's the women. Eat that right for ladies. One goes, there's two. Never just one. It has to be two. So anyhow... So you guys enjoying what's going on here so far at Life of Love Ministry Center in Martinsville, Indiana. So for you, for you that don't know, um, Shelly and I, it's my wife Shelly, and my name's Jason, and this is Tammy and Rick, and his wife is May. Um, hi, May. And so Shelly and I, a few years ago, um, we were offered a full-time position in Destin, Florida, and my wife always wanted to be in Destin. I mean, that's the place that she wanted to be. Her Facebook post was always about sand and Destin and all about Destin. And when, when we got offered a full-time position there, we come back to Indiana, and this was a couple years ago, and God said, will you go to Martinsville? And I said, uh, no. <laughs> no. And, you know, there's a bunch of ways to say no, and I just said, no, I'm not going to do that. And he said, I have something for you in Martinsville. And so after three days of this same thing that he was just pressed on me, I'm trying to get a job finished. I was laying on the floor and trying to get it finished. I was crying. I couldn't finish the job. And I was like, God, what do you want me to do? He's like, I got, got something for you in Martinsville, Indiana. And I said, man, that's labeled the worst place to live in Indiana. And, um, you know, like and at one time, at one time, it was like, man, it's like, Reaching up to touch rock bottom, being in Martinsville, and, and um, but man, God said, "I have something for you," and it's just been incredible. And so her post, I wanted to share this with you because this is, I didn't get to share this last time because I got sidetracked. I got on this rabbit trail, but her post had went from things about Destin to things about Martinsville. And because she didn't want to be here either. And I'm so glad that we chose to be in this place. I'm so glad that we chose this region, this city. And I'm so glad we chose to say yes to God and what he wanted for us. I'm so thankful that we said yes. So now when I try to take her to Florida, she's like, I just don't have time to go. <laughs> And it's, if you knew her before, it was like, if I just mentioned for a spur of the moment, we were gone. And now it's like, I'll say, hey, we can go down there and stay with my sister for free for five days. I, I just don't want to go down for five days. So um, so I can't even drag her out of this, this region. So I'm so thankful for that because God's did a work in her heart as That's well. That's what I was going to say. I was going to 
you know, God's so funny. So he sends his sister as a traveling nurse to Fort Walton Beach, which is just right across the bridge from Destin. So, you know, as us stepping out and being obedient to this, you know, then the sister moves to Fort Walton last year. So we've, we have gone down a few times this year. But um, so a free place to stay is always nice. <laughs> it's just, you know, you have to be using wisdom here and um, can't run down all the time because you're just wore out from what you're doing every, you know, in your routine. So I'm six years younger than she is. He would, he would he would go for three and days 50. and I would be wore out. <laughs> so yeah. So we just want to kind of recap. So uh, we we started so we started at, at the park and it was just uh, just incredible. Just on Thursday night we started there and you know I it, I'm a big vision guy so so I already have the vision of where we're even going next. I know what it's going to look like. I know where we're going, what God's doing. And so I'm a big visionary with that. She's a little different than I am. And I'm just breaking this down a little bit. So our Practical. first service first <laughs> service at the park um, in Martinsville, you know, I'm thinking like we're going to have 100-something people. You know, I mean, I'm just because, you know, you come to Martinsville, it's like, man, you know, God's calling us here. This is going to be amazing. There's going to be people lining up at the door. And... Um, so I set every chair out in that building that you could set out, and she was like, just set a couple chairs out. I'm like, no, I'm setting them all out. And she, you know, I'm like all in. She's like two or I three said, chairs set in. 30. And I said 30. I said is a good number. But I set them all out, and so we, we had like a total of 18 people come. Man, talk about being, talk about, I was like in the dumps for just a moment, and my pastor Tony come up to me, and he said this, and he'll never leave me. He said, never make it about a number. It's about a people that you can train up. No matter how many you have, you can train them up right, and they'll go out and they'll be effective in this world that we're living in. So I've hung on to that. So I've never, I don't count how many come here. I do get a report, though, of how many show up for, for Life of Love Ministry Center, but I don't count, and I don't care about counting. And so it's not my priority on my list to know how many people we have here. But I want to know that when you leave here, that you've got an encounter with Jesus, that you've got left with something more than what you came with. So that's my goal, and that's our heart for Life of Love Ministries. So I just want to talk real quick about my highlights from this last year of 2020. Um, my biggest highlight was the baptisms with um, Pastor Todd Smith from the North Georgia Revival. He showed up in June for two nights, and then again in September. And he'll probably be here again. But just powerful time of life change for every person. 300 people that went through the water out of the 500 visitors in those four days. It was powerful. Um, I'm sure many of you here have experienced and have life change just from getting in the water. You know, Jesus, this is a new season. Um, and he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. So I, I know that that water, you know, just seeing the results of the people's lives. I mean, we had, we had cancers healed. We had drug addicts, um, alcoholics. It didn't matter what the person, fear. <laughs> um, any issue that people had, they came out of the water and they were totally different. And Jesus has just shown himself mighty. So that, that was my highlight. The is there anybody here that has that, that got an yeah. encounter in the water? Anybody yeah. that was here that had an encounter? Yeah, raise your hand if like you if don't be you shy. had a breakthrough. Don't be, don't be shy and afraid I'm going to yeah. call you out to, to tell us yeah. what happened. Um, yeah, you want to tell gets, us what yeah. happened? Yeah. Come, come up here, give him a mic, and, and so you just turn around and tell, tell everybody because, yeah, just let them know your testimony of what happened in the water. Well, uh, Hold that mic up to your mouth, it's a microphone. Yeah, buddy. I was praying about a job, and I was blessed with a, a better job, blessed with health insurance. My mom, she done better than she's done in the last probably five years. Just a bunch of, it all just showered on top of me. A bunch of blessings. Yeah. So. Amen. It was so neat. Um, Eric gets in the water and comes out, and then we just send him down to the last trough to help baptize. 
<laughs> so Speaking he about. had the experience to be across from Andrew Riley, who actually ministers with David Hogan on a regular basis. Just not even that, but just it was powerful watching him just start helping dunk people. His mom, they were going to be the first to leave. They wanted to get in and get out and get out of the building, which is fine. But they all sat here and watched <laughs> their son, um, their husband, and then she was touched. She was healed. Someone had a word for her about uh, her shoulder and the pain, and God immediately healed her. So it was just like a ripple effect of like, whoa, you know, just we know what Jesus can do. You know, we have too many here that their lives have been radically changed. Shasta, come up and share your story real quick. Just a short version of, come on, come on. You look, you look good in pink. She's, her, her shirt says Waymaker. I love it. I want one in black. Okay, we're going to do this short and sweet. Okay, I was in a horrible marriage for 21 years and went through a terrible divorce. We won't even go into the details, but I had PTSD from that and suffered seizures. And when I went down in the water and I came out, came up, Eric experienced it with me. <laughs> I had one in the water. Um, but whenever I went down, he told me to breathe in and breathe out all the junk. When I breathed out, that's whenever I had the seizure. And I felt electricity from my toes all the way up and it just came out. And I know that I know I will never have another seizure again in my life. Yeah. 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 So, good. so good. That right there is the power of the Holy yeah. Ghost. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, good. fear cannot stay when the presence of God's around. Yeah. Then, um, just, just Helen, Helen, real quick, just real quick, share your testimony. Just a look, just real quick, a brief section of it. This is our 16-year-old Helen from Indy, who came down from Indy because of she, uh, Hel Sheila's invite. Yes. Yes. So I uh, just kind of was really suicidal the night coming in here. And I was actually planning to go home and take my life after, after all this was said and done. And I got in the water just, you know, why not? You know, everybody's talking about it, hyping it up. Let's just see what happens. And I had self-harm scars down both of my arms. And I, I came out of the water and we all watched them disappear. Like, they just went away, and they're... So, so let me recap that. She went in the water with scars all up her arms, and, she, and there was three pastors around the trough that she was in right here, and they literally got to watch all her scars disappear off of her arm in the water. So that's just remarkable what he did. A Baptist yeah. pastor, a Nazarene pastor. Yes. <laughs> so they were like, wow. <laughs> so so, so you, where you're at now? So what do you feel like now? So, like, just going into the water just being like crying every night, praying that I wouldn't wake up the next morning. And then I go home and I go to bed and I'm like, yes, I'm waking up tomorrow. Let's do it. And that's just been, that's just been me ever since then. Yeah. Awesome. And there's many more, there's many more testimonies that we could share and um, that we've encountered that we've seen, you know, we, we've stayed stage four lymphoma cancer was healed. Um, there's all these different things that we've seen happen in the water. And it's, it's not, you know, it's just what God is doing. Um, and so we're just so thankful for Todd Smith and his ministry, Andrew Riley and his ministry. Uh, we're just so thankful that, that God has put them in our life and placed them in that place in our life that we can be uh, mentored by, by these powerful, powerhouse people. I'm in, I'm in the business of setting myself around powerful people. And I want to share a vision that I had um, last night, even this morning. And it was a vision of 2020 going away and 2021 coming in and us coming into a new focus of who we are and how God sees us. In the, and what it showed was um, it was like, it's like an engine running. And every, every time that, that you went down, um, there was a, some explosion that brought you back up. And. And what it showed was, you know, we're going to have ups and downs in our relationship and our walks in this life. But what it showed was if we set ourselves around powerful people and in a vision, we all had a powerful people that we were accountable to. And when we hit that down spot, it, we exploded and come back up 
and then when we hit a down spot, and we all were in unison in that, and we were operating and running this engine in perfect harmony um, in that way that we were exploding, coming back up, exploding, just setting ourselves around powerful people. And that's what I encourage you to do is just set yourself around a powerful group of people that, that um, can change your life, that can help you through the battles and struggles that we go through as Christians in our life. Well, just to kind of tag along with what they're saying, um, I've been in Martinsville for 33 years, and when the Lord moved me here, he told me that I would see revival in my lifetime, and so I've been holding on to that. And the other thing is that Martinsville is known for the mineral water years ago, and you probably all know the history of the city of Martinsville and how people came from all over the world to receive healing from the mineral water that was here. And then um, the, the wells got contaminated and, and they shut those wells, capped them. But the redemptive gift of Martinsville is healing through the water. And so that's why I feel like those immersion uh, revival, it was so powerful because that's our gift. That's our city's gift is for healing to come through the water. And, and we know that the water is Jesus. You know, he's the living water, and he's the one that brings healing to our lives in whatever way we need him to bring healing to our lives, whether it be inner healing or health or uh, freedom. You know, he, he just has it all for us. And so I'm just excited about this time that we're in. And I know Jer Jason had shared earlier Years ago, I had been praying and just asking the Lord about, you know, the city and what he was bringing. And, and the Lord told me, he said, I am bringing revival to your city. And I'm going to bring in a man that's going to obey my voice and to, to carry this forward. And he said that he had moved in many of our churches. And, and the Lord even said, I have given the pastors in this region ample opportunity to embrace my move and my spirit. And so I'm really excited because the Lord said in my lifetime, and I did tell him, I'm in my 60s now, and I'd really like for this revival to come a little more quickly. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just so blessed. I mean, she Shelly and I have been friends for so many years, and probably as, almost as long as I've been here in Martinsville. Yeah. And so it's just such a blessing to be able to partner with her and Jason with this work and what God's doing in this city and in this region. So I'm excited. I mean, hang on, guys. 2021 is just going to be incredible. I know it. God has said that we're going to be walking into his greater glory. And so he has so many good things in store. So yay, God. Yes, indeed. Can yay, I share God. something about Tammy real quick? So the first time that I met Tammy, um, Shelly had taken me to pray with the lady, and Tammy was there. You remember that the first time? And and we were they started singing a song, and I literally thought there was angels in the room singing. Tammy has that kind of a voice. I literally thought there was an angel in the room singing. I was like, wow. And so she don't get the op I'll hear her out here every now and then. And I love it. I love to hear her voice. So she is powerful. And so I got to meet her, I think, maybe uh, nine years ago. I got to meet her. So, yeah. Can you introduce the podcast? Come up close. <laughs> yeah, you can get some on you. Yeah. Okay, I'm May. I'm um, Rick's other half. We're Team Cooper up here. You don't separate. <laughs> you don't separate us. <laughs> It's like peanut butter and jelly, I guess. But anyway, um, just a little bit about myself. I was born here in Martinsville, just up the road. I grew up on a street called Church Street. And uh, God called me back here to um, Martinsville for a period of time. Um, I worked for the county for about 25 years. Um, have gone on different uh, adventures and different things that I've done, um, retired a little bit and then I was called to come to work for the city. God has put me in a strategic spot 
uh, I was told that um, where I worked, the office where I worked, the building where I worked, was where the first well, artesian well, was found, was discovered. So anyway, I'm just honored and, and thankful and, and thankful and humbled that he's called me through such a time as this. We talk about the water here a lot. Um, and the highlight was learning about the, the water immersion revival and what, Todd's, what God had given Todd Smith and his vision to do that. And I'm so thankful that Shelley and Jason brought it here. I've learned that um, the, Jesus' first uh, miracle was turning the water into wine. And we've learned about the Jewish uh, wedding ceremony. We learned that the bride um, went through a process of cleansing um, with water. So when it came time, when they ran out of wine and his mother called him, um, or called the servants to bring the jars of, of um, empty jars to Jesus, just do what he tells you to do, those jars, those were used for the bride. They were empty because it was used for the bride. And so when Jesus turned that water to wine and then gave it to the, the people at this celebration, this wedding celebration, it was a symbol of um, showing us that he's preparing his bride. And he's still preparing us. He's still preparing us. And it's, it's we don't want to miss it. I'm just so thankful that I'm a part of this group and a part of this vision. I'm thankful for each one of you because I call you family. You are, I may not know you all by name, but you are in my, in my thoughts, in, the, in my heart. Thank you for being a part of this and get ready. Like they said, God's going to use you. He's going he's gonna to stretch you. He's going to ask you to take a risk that you've never taken before. He's done that with me, and, and I'm just so thankful. He's taken me to a place I never would have gone on my own or never could have gone on my own without Holy Spirit being there and just trusting him trusting him and that's that's my um, challenge for all of you is to trust him in 2021 watch where he takes you my name's Rick Cooper of course I'm married to her <laughs> and uh, I was the last one to come on board and there was kind of a reason for that my wife had started attending uh, you know going up to City Park they were having services up there and uh I'd been burnt by church things in the past. I was kind of reluctant, and she was going to this park thing. The guy looked like an escaped convict, you know. It was lead, <laughs> he was lead, he was leading it, so I wasn't sure about this whole thing, and I wasn't sure I didn't want to get involved. I actually, been in church leadership before, so I'd so I'd never be in that position again. So there I am. But Jason had a, uh, a vision to bring pastors together, you know, in the in the area, and I thought, well, good luck with that because that usually just doesn't happen. But it came to pass. He's got solid relationships with four or five, maybe more pastors in the area. And they work together, and they get things accomplished for the good of the kingdom. So that was one thing. And also he had a vision to uh, put the people first. And I think this place is an example of that. This place is paid for. Uh, we don't know anything on this, but yet if somebody needs something, he'll... He'll give him money for that before he'll buy something for this church. So this church, in my mind, is a people-driven church, not a facilities-driven church. Uh, you know, I used to go to a big church, and they were great and wonderful, but we'd have the air conditioning unit go out, and there was $10,000 up in smoke. Well, we don't have that problem here. We, we can put our funds toward the people, and we do that a lot. And uh, I appreciate that vision that uh, Jason and Shelley have. This is definitely a people-driven church, and... Uh, it's wonderful to see all the changed lives, uh, the people that come through here. Some come quick and some leave quick, but all of them have been touched and a lot of them have been changed in miraculous ways. And God just sends them somewhere else and that's fine, you know. But the people that are here, uh, wonderful people, and we just uh, love being a part of this ministry. And uh, thank you so much, Jason and Shelley, for standing up. Thank you, guys. So, as I said, this is your leadership team, and, and how we've uh, structured this church is, um, for a while, we didn't even know what to call it, you know, the thing. We just did the thing that God's doing, you know, and, and 
Why don't we call it the church? Um, but you know, the church is is more than just this building. It's it's us as a group. It's a people. You know, and, and my vision to bring pastors together, you know, um, is getting us to realize that we're all the church. We're one body. And yeah, we have different kind of worships and we have different kind of messages. But it's all focused on Jesus Christ, and that's what it should be focused on. And, and that's okay to have, you know, a diversity of churches. I mean, you know, um, and I'm just so thankful for the pastors that we've got to meet and just do life with. It's just been incredible, um, the, the, the pastors that we've got to meet. And just we are doing life with pastors from total different denominations, you know. And we even, we even have some pastors that are that <laughs> they're so intrigued by the simplicity of the gospel that we talk about. They're so intrigued by that because they've made it so complicated and so hard. And there's nothing hard about Jesus. There's nothing at all hard about Jesus. And so my fav- one of my favorite times is during the build out of this. This was the empty shell. And when we come in and, and, um, and COVID happened right when we signed the lease for this and thinking, okay, what's going to happen now? And, and they're telling everybody to shut down. And, and I just said, no, again, I'm not going to shut down. Um, I guess if they would have took me to jail, they just would have had to take me to jail because I just wasn't going to do it. So what we decided, because we want to honor people, and what we decided to do was do a park and pray. So we would let people pull up, and we would go out, and they could keep their windows up, you know, and not, you know, interact that way. But we could pray with them. And I know every car load, I mean, they would come in car loads and they would all leave crying when they left because they got an encounter with Jesus through a window, through a park and pray. And I remember there was a time that there was cars all the way out to the road and they were waiting to get turned in so they could come up and we could pray with them. And, you know, I'm so excited about that, about what God did through that, and we've grown from that, and he's shown us things through that. I want you guys to know that we are a COVID-free church, and I, I don't want to like just be boastful about that, but but we, I felt like that God, and I've got to be careful how I say this because I don't want to say he didn't cover other churches and other people and other things, but I want to say that we did something here. We made a commitment to stand. And we, and we just said a few things that we're not going to do. Um, and we're just going to trust. And through that, we are a COVID-free facility. I really believe that, that the people that are part of this church walk through those doors, they are covered. They're covered by the blood of Jesus. They're covered by the blood of the Lamb. And that's happened with us. And, and so COVID's been going on for a while. And we've not had one member of our church with COVID. And um, so I'm just so thankful for that. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. I really feel. And so I'm excited about that. So, w- do you guys have any questions that you have for, um, for us as as a church or as um, a people, where we're going, what God's doing in and through us? Mark, you have a question. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to know um, what is um, the Tennessee bombing. My sister down now, and it was downtown, and they, and the three people, they didn't get the name yet. I like go ahead to them on the. Really, it's they call um, they took off and me chilling and you young thing is very good uh, people. They got some bad people too, and uh, being bad people. I don't hang out with. My question is, since 
time in the new future. I'm going to have to um, move and I don't want to move out in Martinsville. Well, well, Mark, we're going to continue to pray about that, but um, um, your first question was about the Tennessee bombing. So um, it's still under investigation, so we don't know, and we don't even know what's going to be truth when it's told to us. So what we do know, though, that Jesus is good, God is good always and all the time. So we're going to lean on those things and lean on the truth of that and the truth of what heaven has to offer for us in the midst of a world of fake news or whatever we're going to get fed about what happened there. So we just thank God for that. And as far as you moving, we don't want you to move out of Martinsville either. So we're just going to ask the Lord to just open up doors for you, um, that you would be able to stay here in this region with us. So we just thank God for that. So thank you for that question, Mark. Anybody else have a question? Great question, though. Come on, anybody want to know where we're going, what we're doing? Any questions? What's what's next? Okay. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have food here. In a, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so Jesus told me. So um, when he called me to this, I, I have visions all the time. So if you guys don't know what a vision is, it's pretty cool. Um, but I have open visions of things, and I had a vision of Jesus standing in front of me, rolling a wheel, and he had a, a rod through the wheel. To, it was a stone wheel, and it was a, a wood rod through the wheel. And he's rolling it, and he looked, he's wearing a purple robe and a, and, or a purple uh, white robe and a purple sash. And he turned around and looked at me square in the eyes, and he said, stay behind me. And so that's what we're doing. We're staying behind him in what he's doing. And he's literally taken that log or that wheel, and he's rolled over every obstacle that's gotten in our way. I mean, it, it's, un, it's, it's uncanny how um, – did I use that word right? It was pretty good, wasn't it? I just thought of it. It's uncanny. <laughs> Sorry. It's uncanny. <laughs> Tammy corrects my spelling all the time, and, and Shelly corrects my language. But it's uncanny. <laughs> Just the, the obstacles that have been crushed in front of us. It's, it's been so easy to do this. It's been so fun and so easy to do this thing. But I remember there was a time when I looked around that will and I leaned over and I looked around in the prophetic and um, if you don't know what that is we're going to have classes on that too but I looked around and he Jesus said stop he said if you see what I have for you you'll blow it so I, I don't know what it's going to be but I know it's going to be great and we've had several visions and we've had several people see people come from uh, that don't even know us from other states and call us and say we see God doing this in your life and this in your ministry. So let's just stay focused on him. Stay behind him always. Don't get in front of him. Don't get ahead of him. Don't get in a hurry. We're on a downhill slope. When we were in other, other states, Shelly and I both had these words from people. They said that God is sending you to a place in a region that is there's brand new pavement being all around this region. This is before we even started the ministry. They said they're paving the roads all around this region, and it's on a downhill slope. And everything you do for God, even if you stop, you're still going to be rolling forward. There's still going to be forward process. If, you know, you're going to be able to roll. And, and so that's what we're leaning on, those things, those words that we've been given before this ministry ever started. And we know it's just going to be an amazing thing. My goal is, is to get into the Marsh building over here. I don't know how that's going to happen um, because I don't have the, the money it's going to take, but he does. And, you know, he has, you know, uh, he has everything we need to be able to get into that building yeah. over there. So, um, yeah. When the Lord first gave us, we were in North Carolina staying at some friends' house. And that night we both had uh, visions and dreams and we woke up, we knew our ministry would be called Life of Love. Um, we saw this building, this actual room right here, we saw this building. Um, we knew it was going to be ours. So we're, we start at the park, we're over at the youth center for nine months, all the while asking if we can rent this out. And no. we would always be denied. 
But one day, we went to, we had bought chairs in faith when we were at the youth center. We went to Michigan to pick them up last January 30th, right? Yeah. Thursday and Friday. Look, at, look the dates up. Anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, us coming back, I kind of did like just a little decree. I was like, well, Lord, we are just standing in faith by picking these chairs up that that building's going to open. And it was the next day. Same so day. We got, so what we got, yeah. Okay. Same you. day. So we got we got here. We unloaded the chairs. I drove in front of the youth center and dropped something off of the youth center because we just unloaded the chairs because it, it was just incredible. And so she did, you know, she's called for things like that, and it just, they happen. So. Um, our bass player. <laughs> yeah, our bass player. <laughs> our Haitian bass player. And. Um, so, because that was specific what she called out, and we got what she called. But she called that out on the way home. And I, so I went by the, um, the youth center and dropped something off, and I drove around here. Now, mind you, before the ministry started, before we was even at the park, I brought Tony Costa, and we stood out front here. And I looked at this building. It was a, it was a fitness center at the time. Or an Bars old, on fire. Old fitness center. had these big flames on the windows. And I stood out there, and I said, Tony, I said, this is where God's going to put us. And he goes, well, you guys getting it? I said, no, it's, I don't even know nothing about it. I said, this is where God's going to put us. And that day, that was before we started the ministry. And so I drive through here, and I go up that way, and I see keys hanging out of the door of this March building. And so I called the owner of the property. I said, hey, I said, you left some keys in the door of the March building. And um, he goes, no, I'm in here. Come in. So I, I went in there, and he said, do you still want that building? And I said, yes. And we were so thankful because I, I mean, this is, I, the keys are there. And he said, do you still want that? You want that building? And I said, yes. And so we just, I like really quickly, we got and together a contract, the took it to an attorney, <laughs> had him look it over, make sure there wasn't no crazy stuff in it. And we signed a contract for a three-year lease. We're almost a year into our three-year lease right now. So I'm just so thankful. That's how God has been working things out for this ministry. It's just un, uncanny what he's doing. And it's just. Um, it's just amazing, so I'm so thankful. Um, do we have one more? Any, do anybody have one more question of what we're going to do before we get started with uh, with our lunch? You have one? Yeah, the keys. Yes. The answer to that place over there. Yeah, I know. So I'm just excited. And we what happened is, what Jason. happened? They gutted that building out over there. <laughs> They gutted that building out because they were going to put apartments in there. And we didn't pray against them, but we just thought, yeah, God, that's our building over there. And um, so now that's, as far as we know right now, that's not going to happen. So, you know, we're just, we're just, um, we're just really thankful that what God is doing, what God is doing. So, go ahead. I think it's interesting that uh, we were at the youth center for nine months. Nine months is birth. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. We were not even done um, building this out. And he was already talking about knocking that wall out and going into Marsh. And this would be the youth center. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's his vision. He had the vision before he ever, we ever completed yeah, so like this. It, like really with my, my mind, you know, we're, we're here, but we're moving forward to where he's got us. And we are really, I'm t I keep saying this, but we are getting this building over here ready. Um, we actually have a concrete machine in there to, or to get everything ready. So we got people that are going to help us put it in. We're just waiting on the right right time and the right weather and just everything that we can get this. Everybody's schedules lined up to get the concrete poured so our youth can be in that area. So we got 1,400 square feet over there. So we're just excited about that as well. Anybody else? So if we had, if we don't have any more questions, I uh, wanted to share about Give Him 15 and Dutch Sheets. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Dutch Sheets, but he has an app on, um, you can download it on your phone. He's also on Facebook and YouTube. And the Give Him 15 is to take 15 minutes every day and pray about this election and the results, and they really have been powerful. So I encourage you to look him up and to pray along 
with that. And then I also want to just encourage everyone this new year where we're coming into to take a time of fasting and prayer, not only for our individual lives, our family, our city, our nation, the nations, to really seek the Lord out on what he would have us do. And once again, I just really encourage you to pray. You know, we are seated with the Lord, with Jesus in heavenly places, and that we've been given authority over all the works of the enemy. And I think a lot of times in the past, the church has suffered. We've just not grown as we should because we haven't walked in that authority that the God has, that the Lord has given. And so I want to encourage you to get on there, check it out, make some decrees and some declarations for our country and for this, this uh, next election. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I just want to, I just want to take this time. We're going to turn the ambient music up a little bit and our, our um, leadership team is going to come out here. We're going to stand up front. So if you have anything you need prayer for, um, just come up and, and uh, we'll be glad to pray for you. Um, anything that's going on in your life, um, any struggles, battles that you need um, prayer for. We're going to try to start this a little bit earlier than 1 o'clock. So if you guys have people that are supposed to be here at 1 o'clock, um, maybe you can get them here a little earlier. Um, so it's just, um, yeah, it's just good. God is so good. So let's just pray, and then we'll, we'll as I'll start, I'll pray as you guys get down there, um, and then um, we'll transition into that. Yeah, Father, we do love you. We lift you up right now. We glorify your name, Jesus. You're so amazing. You're so worthy of it all, Father. God, we ask this morning that you would just give us strength and encouragement, Lord, that you would work through this ministry, Lord these people that you have handpicked to come to this place, to reach out to this lost and dying world, this lost and dying community, city, region, state. Father, that you would do through us the things that you dreamed for us. God, I pray for encounters this year like none other. Encounters this year, God, that we've never seen. Father, I thank you for every new encounter that I get from you, every new revelation, every new idea, every new thought. So we thank you, Father, for, for who you are, for who you we are in you. Thank you for that place that you've carved out in your heart for each and every one of us to rest in. May we go there often to rest in you and get a glimpse of where we came from and actually who we are. What love really is, the true untainted version of love, the true untainted version of what freedom looks like. Father, we thank you that chains are being broken, even in the region as we speak. We thank you for your heavenly angels carrying out the message. The chains are being broken, hearts are being changed, lives are being won for you. Now, Father, we ask this morning that, that before we go to... Um, the lunch, this Christmas lunch celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, that you would touch the hearts of your people. If they need prayer, Lord, or need anything, God, that they would come forward and just call upon you, call upon your name, Jesus, the name above all names. And we thank you for that. Bless this food that we're about to eat, let it be nourishing to our bodies in some way, shape, or form change the molecular structure in Jesus' name. Amen.